Hi, and welcome to Welcome Tutorial on Lettering and Applique. Um, my name is Andrea Bomarito, and I'm going to show you how to do applique on lettering that is already in Wilcom, whether it's the embroidery format or the pre digitized letters, or it's true type fonts. Um, with applique, there is a basic, you need to have a basic understanding of how it works. Um, there's a three or a two step process, depending upon what kind of cover stitch or uh, finishing stitch you might have on the actual applique. Um, and with applique, it is with that process, you typically have a guide run or a placement run, which shows you where to put down your fabric. Then you may have a tack down stitch. A tack down stitch would be that second uh, stitch that goes down, usually just to the inside of the fabric that's being laid down to tack it down onto the material or to tack it down onto the garment that you're stitching on. This helps attach it and keep it in place and then also helps if you are cutting it um, while it is on the machine or you know the fabric is not pre-cut. Then you finally have a cover stitch and that cover stitch will be the edging um, on the applique fabric that'll finish it off. So again um, applique is a three-step process typically. It could also be a two-step process in that you don't have a tack down because maybe you're using a finishing stitch that is very open and you don't want to see a stitch underneath it um, such as a zigzag or tackle twill uh, type of edging or even a uh, run stitch and typically those are used with pre-cut fabrics, fabrics that you cut before um, doing the embroidery, whether it's like laser cut or knife cut, you know, with a machine um, that you have nice clean edges on there. Okay, so first things first, let's pull up a letter and I want to talk to you about um, what we need to do to the letter before we actually turn it to applique. So over here on my object properties, now if you don't have your object properties up, or your color object list up, I do encourage you to put those on or pin them. They're usually on the right hand side on your dockers. If you don't see it over there, go up to window, dockers, and then you've got object properties and color object list. So again, I would just encourage you to have those pinned. They're very, very useful. So here I'm going to go to um, special, um, the special category and lettering. And here we're just going to type in a letter. Um, I'm going to type in the letter A, um, and I'm just going to use the block for now. Now this is an embroidery font. I can tell it's an embroidery font because it has the embroidery kind of stitch icon next to it. I am going to change that size to about two inches, and then I'm just going to create the text. So in creating the text, I'll left click, and here now we have our letter. Um, if I try to take this and convert it to an applique, it won't work. Um, one, because it is a lettering property. So if I right click on it, I can convert. Um, I, I cannot convert it to an applique at this point. One of the things that I'd like to show you is that with an applique design, you typically want what's green as our fabric and then an applique stitch to go around it. So I'm just going to turn off the true view. And I'm also going to turn off the show stitches and what's left is the outline. You can see that this A is broken up into four pieces. The horizontal part right here, a leg, a leg, and then the top cap. Uh, right now it is still a lettering element. I can tell that over here on my color object list where it says object and it has lettering. It's a satin stitch. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it apart so we can really see what um, it consists of. So when I left click on it over here with my select tool, um, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say break apart. When I left click on break apart, now you will see those four pieces that I was talking about. Those four pieces are now all individual pieces. Um, they are still part of the A, but they're now individualized so that now I can change each one if I want. So for example, uh, I'm going to switch back to my true view here. If I want to change this part to tatami, I could. Um, but I could also right click on there and convert that 
to an applique. But when I do that, and I'm just going to run through and hit enter, it only does just that piece. So we have to combine, I just turned off the 3D view, we have to combine all of these pieces together to make one area for the applique. So I'm going to hit the undo button. Actually, what I'm going to do is I am going to take these other pieces and turn them invisible. So, or I'm going to hide them. So I selected the, uh, we're going to select these pieces. I'm just going to left click on this piece, hold my shift key, left click on four. So when I choose anything between two and four, it's selecting, uh, when I left clicked on this and then hold shift, it selects everything in between two and four. I'm going to right click and then select hide. So you can see this is only applicated this piece right here. Um, and it's because all of these pieces are individual. So I'm just going to undo till we get back to our four pieces. And let's go ahead and right click on one of these guys. I don't have to select every one or even the uh, hidden ones. If I right click, I can say unhide all. Okay. So what I need to do is combine them. We have the ability to combine them uh, with the tool over here. Uh, but nothing is selected right now. The one thing I do like to make sure of, I'm going to zoom in. So I'm going to hit Z on my keyboard. And then I'm going to scroll up and kind of zoom in that way too. I'm using the scroll on my mouse. Um, I want to make sure that things are overlapped. So I'm going to turn off my um, stitch view. I'm also going to turn off my needle points. And I just want to look at my actual pieces um, or my outlines. Now this, I don't know how well it's going to do um, because it's not really overlapped or it's just touching these other areas. We want them to combine. So we're going to go ahead and left click, hold and drag, select all of our areas and let's see how well it combines. So over here on the left hand side, I have got um, a tool here called intersect but I can click on this fly out menu and the first option here is weld. Um, I say combine, it's actually weld. So when I click on it, it should weld everything together. Now it did and it's all one piece, but I can see I've got this kind of strange um, inlet here. And really what that is is a negative space in there. So it comes down, then co comes around and around. Um, and that's because of the way that the original pieces were. Um, I'm going to hit the undo button. I'm going to left click off to the side to deselect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to use my scroll and on my mouse and um, zoom in. I'm then going to go to the reshape tool. And I'm just going to reshape this to where it does overlap a little bit. Let's see if this does any better. So what I'm doing is I'm taking each individual node and overlapping it into the other sections. Now I'm finished with that. So I will left click on my select tool and I will left click, hold and drag and select everything. Now I will left click on weld again. And that looks much better. So you can see by the way that things are um, set up first uh, can affect the way that it's going to weld. So just to recap, we are in the, um, we're viewing the outline um, of our letters right here, or of our area. Um, and we actually do see that it is a satin stitch over here in the fills. We can also see that it's a complex turning. If you wanna see the stitches, we can activate the stitches just by showing them on screen. And this might just be a nice useful tool just to see what's going on. Um, Right now, it is a shape with satin stitches filling that shape. We are going to take that shape and turn it into an applique so it can uh, apply that process of the guide run, the tack down, and the cover stitch. We can also do applique manually by creating those three steps ourselves, um, but it is nice that Wilcom does have this in here. So I am going to left click on the piece that I want to change to applique. After it is left click selected, we will right click and we will then go to convert. So you want to make sure you're right clicking on that object, go to convert, and then you have the option now to convert it to applique. Once we can convert it to applique, you will see 
After I left click, I have a box around that area. It's asking me for an entry point, which you can see down at the prompts, the bottom left hand side. I'll go ahead and left click where I want that entry point. I can enter in my exit point, left click again. And you know, you can always hit enter and have the program do it automatically for you. Now the next one is our frame out position. So I'm going to go ahead and come up here to my frame out. I will left click and that will be my frame out position. After I left click, it will then turn it to applique and I have the three steps. Again, you can just hit enter um, after every prompt and it will just do an automatic um, entry, exit and frame out. If you wanna see what those settings are, you can go to the special tab, but first make sure you are left clicked on the object. You can left click on it here or you can left click it on it over here in the color object list. Then go to special. Under special, um, what's nice is that you can actually show an applique fabric if you'd like. Um, let's go ahead and just, you know, go ahead and show this fabric with red, press OK, and you could actually show an applique fabric if you want. I'm just going to no fabric at all and press OK. The first step in this, well, first of all, you do see three colors. You see the pink, the purple, and the um, green. And the pink and purple are going to be the guide run and the tack. So the pink is the guide run and the purple is the tack. Right now in our guide run, it does say that we have a pre-cut letter or a pre-cut object. So that would be my applique, my applique fabric that's already pre-cut, whether it's by laser, water jet, you know, knife cutting, whatever it may be. Um, I also have the ability to trim in place. With that trim in place, it does two, basically two guide runs, and after the second one, you can trim. Some people also like to trim after the tack, so it really depends on what you want to do. But with pre-cut, and um, I'm going to leave that as is for now, just to explain what the stitch length and offset are. So the stitch length is going to be the stitch length of the run stitch for the guide run. So I'm going to turn the true view off and I'm going to deselect use the cover stitch just to show you some of these um, these settings and I'm also going to have no tack stitch so you can see this is my guide run right here I don't have anything else activated so you're just seeing the guide run so with the guide run my stitch length is 2.5 millimeters and my offset is at zero so it's exactly on that outline if I take that offset and I change it to positive and I hit enter, you'll see it'll go outside. Now this is my outline right here and this is my guide run on the outside there. Typically we want the guide run to be at zero and that's so that it is showing us the exact shape and size of that applique fabric. If I do a trim in place and left click here, you will see another guide run that will stitch directly after um, as a separate color so you can input a stop in your machine um, and that will help with pre-cutting or I'm sorry with um, trimming on the machine so again it is a 2.5 stitch length it's the same settings as um, as what we had before so both lines will have the exact same settings so it just depends again on what you want to do now the frame out um, that function is now determined by a color change. So you'll have two colors here and then a frame out function, which is a third color. Let's go ahead and input a tack down stitch. Our tack down stitch, we can do a run, an E stitch, a zigzag, or an edge zigzag. If you left click on edge zigzag, this is what's usually done by default. I have here different settings. I have spacing, which is going to be the density of that edge run. So if I bring that down to a lower number, I'm gonna have closer spacing, more density. I'll hit enter. Then I have count. That's how many times it's gonna go over that zigzag there. So it's just one time run zigzag. I also have a width of the zigzag. Now the width of the zigzag needs to correspond with the cover stitch in that the cover stitch needs to cover it up but that also has to do with your offset. So with a width of two millimeters, that's going to be the width of my cover stitch. And then I have an offset of negative 0.4. So it's actually going to sit inside 
negative 0.4 millimeters of that original outline. Then from there, it's going to go half on one side, half on the other. So if I change this down to one, go ahead and highlight it and type in one and enter. Whoops. You can see it's a much smaller one, but I don't know that it's going to cover what you need to cover. So sometimes playing with these different settings can help determine what you need as far as your tack down stitch. Now you have another frame out. So right now this is a color change. Um, and we're going to then use the cover stitch. Uh, and actually before I go to that, we do have, you know, you can do run and right now the run is the same as the guide run. So maybe I'll make that negative 0.5 enter and you can see now it goes in just to the interior. And again, you want to make sure that that offset does correspond um, with the cover stitch in that the cover stitch will cover that negative offset. You also have an E stitch, which is more like a blanket stitch. And here, um, you have the spacing, which is kind of like the density, how close these little uh, E's are to each other. You have how wide you want it, and you have the offset. And then you have also have like a normal zigzag. Again, same settings. And then here we'll just do the edge zigzag. So we'll just leave that as is. We will then activate the color cover stitch, left click. And with the cover stitch, uh, it's showing me the width of the... Um, of the satin stitch. So if I want to change that to smaller, I can hit three. That's three millimeters now. And again, we want to make sure that it's going to cover our tack down. You also have the offset, which is going to be the offset according to the shape, which right now it's a negative 0.38. I'm just going to do a negative five. Hit enter and it's going to go in just a little bit more. So it all depends on how far maybe you want it to, the edging of the stitching, you want it to be from the original artwork. Um, you could have it at zero and it'll go a little bit bigger. So changing the offset and changing the width can definitely change, you know, different things. Now here's your frame out um, coordinates here. So if I want to make sure that it moves out to zero and then 20 millimeters, I can do that and it will change that frame out to exactly 20 millimeters. Um, so now you can see that you have these four colors, but you also have color changes in between with the frame out. So let me show you what that means. Right now they're all one piece. So if I right click on this and then I hit break apart, you're going to see the pink or the guide run. Then you'll see zero, which is the frame out, which will actually be a color change. So I'm just going to show you in our stitch list. Let's go ahead and show the functions. We're going to show stop and we're going to show color change. So what we have here is that we have the, um, the, the guide run and then a zero which moves it out to a color change. And then we have the guide run again in a sense for the trimming in place and then a color change or frame out with a color change and then we have the um, tack down frame out with the cover ch color change and then we have the cover stitch you can delete these frames at frame out if you want just by left clicking on it and hit delete and it will delete those frame outs then you can do your own frame out position if you'd like it's really up to you on how you want to do this. But once we export this, um, it's going to export as four different colors for the machine. And within those colors, that's where you can input your stops.
All right, so let's turn off the stitch list. We'll go ahead and hide it. And now that we can see the applique and what it's doing, we can export it for the machine. If you export it as a DST for the ZSK machine, um, you will have to input the plus stops for the, uh, you know, the different steps of the process. If you would like to input stops yourself, um, you can do that when it's broken apart, but you could also do that here with the stop movement. Um, but since we have already broken it apart, uh, we don't have that, but we can always go back to it. Um, I'm going to show you again on how to do that. But if you want to input a stop after this piece, um, we want it to stop before it does the guide, the second guide run so that this will show us where to lay down the fabric. Then we want it to stop and we want to lay down the fabric. Then we want it to stitch again and stop again so that we can cut around it. So I highlight this piece. I want to stop to happen after this piece. So I'll go up to function and insert stop. Then I could actually take these two pieces and change it to the same color if you want or you can keep it a different color. It just depends on how you want to work. I want it to stop after this piece as well. So after I choose this, I'll go to function and insert stop. So it'll be a color, stop, color, stop. Now I can go to this piece right here. I want it to stop again after the stitches just to check everything. So I'll go to function and insert stop. It'll stop along with the color change. So if we look at our stitch list here, now you can see that it will do the color and stop. The color and stop. So what it'll do is it'll stitch this, it'll move to the next color, but then stop. So I can see that um, stitches one through 115, or actually 114 it will stitch. It'll switch to the next color and then stop before it starts stitching again. Then it will trim between 116 and 229. I'm, yes, it will, tr it will uh, stitch between 116 and 229. Trim, move to the next color, and then stop before it starts stitching again. So this will all be embedded in the Z00 file um, if you import it that way too. Okay, so you can export it. Now if I export it as a DST, then I'll have extra color changes because this it actually stops um, and then optimize. Um, but if you export it as a ZOO file, it will be four colors with the four stops or the three stops, I apologize. So let's go to a new design here and we are gonna go to special and lettering and we are gonna type in the word applique. We are now going to use, actually, let's go ahead and deselect on the type. We only want to show our true type fonts. And I'm going to do all. And then I'm going to find the font that I want to applique. And here we go. I want to make it about 60 millimeters tall. I'll create the text. Left click. And sometimes, you know, this didn't come in the best way, but we can go in with our reshape here and we can move those letters around so it looks correct. Okay. The other thing is remember when we look at, we're going to turn off everything but the outline. Um, you can see that things are divide it up and we want that all to merge together. So with it selected, we first need, we can't really merge right now. Um, there is something called combine. I don't know if that actually will do it or not, but we can try. Uh, and it did okay. But basically what it did is that it, it broke it apart. Um, so we could do that and then weld it um, or we can do this right click and break it apart and then select it again and break it apart again and then we can select all of the areas with a left click hold and drag 
come here and weld. And it should weld it all together. So I would go in and make sure that things look correct. You know, if I need to change anything, I can go in and go to the reshape tool and change anything I'd like. Now these lines that you're seeing here, that is my satin stitch or my satin angles, I should say, or the stitch angles. I can not show those if I want. And then I can go in and clean that up if I'd like. So we're going to go ahead and just go to the select option. We do have the eye, the dot of the eye here too. So those are two separate areas. So I'm just going to select everything and right click and say convert and convert to applique. Again, you have the different options or the different prompts. And actually, I think it's only going to do this large piece. So if I hit enter, it'll put in the original. Oh, it does do it together. Good. And I'll do enter again. And what it did is it just automatically put in my settings. So you have, if we look at the stitch view, we have all those stitch settings. If you want to change them, again, we would go to our tools and change the cover stitch, the tack down stitch, all that good stuff, however you'd like. Now, I did mention that sometimes it's only a two-step process for applique um, in that you maybe don't want a tack down or with the cover stitch, maybe you want a just a line stitch instead of a, instead of a, um, a satin stitch. So if I go to this design here that, that we've taken apart, it says use cover stitch. It didn't break apart this last piece, but if I right click and hit break apart, it then turns into a, um, a column C. And with that column C, I can actually take that and go to outlines change that from a satin to a run. So you could actually change it to a run if you want, if you do break it apart. You can also, um, I believe you can change it in here. If you go to outlines, oh no, you can't, I'm sorry. It is actually a satin. So you have underlay and all that good stuff that you can work with it. Um, so you may need to break it apart if you wanna change the type of cover stitch. So again, with the applique, I do, I can go to special here and I can change all these settings however I'd like. So this you can see is quite overlapping. So that's where I see maybe I want to change the width of the applique stitch along with the offset. Maybe I want it as a zero offset. It comes out a little bit more. But then things start getting a little hairy in here. I don't know exactly what that is. It could be with the way that the shape is. Um, but there's just some, maybe that's underlay. Let's take off the under. Yeah, it looks like it was just underlay that was peeking out. Um, so sometimes when I'm doing things that are a little bit more unique, I might go in and break these things apart. And after I break it apart, I have a little bit more control. So really you do see a lot of unlimited capabilities depending on how you want the applique to look, um, how you can change the, uh, the shape of it all, how you can change the stitches. So we're just going to go backwards a little bit. I'm going to hit undo so that it does go back to the, um, the applique objects. And with this selected, I'm going to go to special. And here we're going to change this to stop and stop. So you see those color changes go away. And what happens is that in our stitch list, it does turn it to stop. So when you do export it as a ZSK, a TC file, the ZOO file, it will recognize the stops but not change the needle. If you export it as a DST right now, it will export it with color changes or with stop changes. Um, so now these ones that you see here, that's going to be the dot of the eye. So let's go ahead and pin this so it kind of opens this up. The dot of the eye, let's also change this to stop and stop. So right now we only have one color, but we actually have several stops within that color. Um, and that's because we've got the uh, placement stitch. After placement stitch, it stops. 
uh, then you have the tack down stitch. After the tack down stitch, it stops, but it's all the same color. And then um, it'll stitch the cover stitch. And then it does not stop because it continues to the placement stitch of the eye. There's no stop in between those two. There's really no need. And then it stops after the placement stitch of the eye, uh, that circle. Then it does the tack down stitch of the eye. Um, after that, it stops and then does the cover stitch of the eye. So there's actually four stops within the design itself. Um, or, yeah, four stops. Um, so placement, stop, tack down, stop, cover, continue to the um, placement, and then after it does that placement, stop, tack down, stop, and then cover, and then end. And these are the frame outs, so it will frame out after, um, or before it stops. So it'll do the placement stitch, frame out, and stop. Do the tack down stitch, frame out, and stop. So that's kind of basically how it works. Um, there are a lot of different things that you can do in here, and if you want further help, I'm happy to help. Um, you can email me, Andrea, at zskmachines.com. Thank you.